Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's really amazing to be part of this. Um, you have no idea who we are, which is brilliant. Um, and we've got 15 minutes, so we're just going to have a conversation. Um, you'll probably be, hopefully, hearing slightly less from me. My name's Chris Thorpe. I'm a theatre maker and a playwright. Uh, this is Louise Walling. We know each other uh, through our attachment to Manchester Royal Exchange. We've come to writing from very different uh, backgrounds, but one of the things I guess that we have in common, and I, I'm going to ask Louise to talk about with reference to a project that she's currently running, is the idea of art as an empowering tool for people to articulate their their views and what perhaps happens when those views are not the views of the artist. Um, so we're going to talk about empowerment versus activism and the way that art might intersect with both of those. Uh, probably sounds dry, which is why most people have left, so welcome for staying. All right, uh, so I'm going to pass it over to Louise and I just wanted to talk about as much as you want to tell us about where you come from and why you do what you do, briefly, but also specifically about the project that you're running at the moment in Great Met and Bolton, which are two communities in Manchester. Hello, everybody. It's very nice to see you all. Um, so, yeah, I'm Louise Walwyn. I left home, I, oh, yeah, I grew up on a council estate called Withinshaw, which we were very proud of was the biggest council estate in Europe. That's what we were told. Uh, Labour through and through. We, we support United. That's who we were. Then in 1979, I fucked off because uh, the adopted family I've given, I was given was shit. And uh, I put myself in care. And then I was in care for till, well, till I was 17 and a half, till I had to turn up to a Moss Side housing office and claim political asylum because I came out when I was 17 and a half and the nuns, you know, it didn't sit very well with them. And um, so I got my own flat, got my own council flat in Moss Side. And um, at that age, when was that called? That must be 1986 six or seven, um, I go out to the village, well it wasn't the village then, it was just two gay pubs in Manchester, uh, and somebody stuck a leaflet in my hand, and it had loads of bombs on it, and it was uh, telling me all about Clause 28, and I thought how lovely of them had just come out. So I organised, well I helped organise, I'd love to take credit for it, but there was about a hundred of us that organised the biggest ever a uh, queer demo that Britain had ever seen in Manchester. 25,000 people turned up. It was marvellous. Ian McKellen came out on that day, finally. And it was great. I was at the front and I had 25,000 people behind me. Uh, Peter Tatchell, Ian McKellen. It was great. Didn't know who half of them were. And, um, and that was my coming out party. But also what was wonderful was that that movement came um, just after the queers sticking up for the miners. So it was great. It was a lovely movement to come out into because I was taught by all these very lovely middle class people uh, that to have a movement, you need to create a movement that's a broad church. What I was told was a broad church. So the next thing... I found myself homeless, but fortunately for me, there was this bloke called Viraj Mendes seeking sanctuary in a church in Hume, a revolutionary communist. And um, I lived in the church with him, really, for a couple of years. He used to do the overnight vigils. And um, unfortunately, 500 police kicked the door in the night I was in hospital. And um, they got away with uh, deporting Viraj to Sri Lanka. And um, I tried to stop it. I went to Gatwick Airport and tried to actually physically stop the fucking plane. And the police broke me out. 
live on the one o'clock news. And that was that really, and then I needed to, oh yeah, I wrote a play as well. Somebody said, as, uh, my social workers, to keep me out of trouble, got me into this wonderful place called Contact Youth Theatre. And uh, this bloke said, you should write a play. And I went, fuck off, I don't want to write a, write a play, you cheeky cunt. And uh, so then I wrote a play. <laughs> um, saw my name in lights and wrote a fucking play. And it's the best thing I've ever been. But then I needed a bit of a rest and a childhood. Never had one, so I became a go-go dancer. It's a fabulous nightclub called the Hacienda. And uh, lived on the double, which for those of you that don't know, that's like, you know, when you get your gyro, you know, you have to do cleaning jobs in order to eat. So I used to get paid £1.50 an hour to clean 146 toilets a night. And um, <clears throat> what else? So then, yeah, fast forward to um, just, I just wanted to say that I do a lot of projects with young homeless people. Uh, um, young unemployed people and what I always tell them was look right I was on the doll for 10 years and I used to turn up every fortnight and say I want to be a poet I want to be a poet and they give me my gyro and tell me to fuck off anyway I won and um, I became the first ever poet to receive business startup allowance and uh, for the past 15 years I've been I've been, I'm dedicated to the word. The word saved my fucking ass. Um, it showed, it gave me a future. So what I've done in the past 15 years, mostly up north, just come back from Canada, up north in Canada, and I get people to write. Unemployed people, young male sex workers, prisoners, communities that have just rioted. I see myself as a cultural diplomat. That is my job. I am a diplomat. I would actually like a better wage than what I get like, but, you know, it's what I do. It's what I do. So anyway, I've done loads of shit and I get away with shit. So in Break Met, I get away with more shit than I usually do. And I work, um, I do a lot of work for this wonderful neighbourhood management team in Break Met in Bolton. And it's led by this geezer called Tony Cotton, who's the neighbourhood manager. And he gets a bit bored of the potholes and cat shit. So it gets people like me in, and um, I turned a, council, a former council house into uh, installation. So you walk in and you make it talk. It, it, you, your body makes it talk. So all these stories, you ding the microwave, a story will come out. You open the cutlery drawer, a story will come out. And it's the women's stories of this estate. So what I'm doing now, currently, is I'm working, um, I want, my ambition is I want a 100% election spike in Brake Met Bolton. And Brake Met is the overspill of the overspill. It's the arse end of Greater Manchester. It's beautiful, it's got lovely views. And um, so what I'm doing is um, I'm going and talking to people and I'm not asked who they vote for, I just want them to vote. Right? And it's brilliant. And a lot of people I go, are you going to vote? And it, you see, it used to be in the past people didn't tell you how they voted, but people have been saying, I'm going to vote you, Kit. So, you know, the first time it happened, I had to really bite my tongue and, whoa, you know, because back in the day, I would have really kicked off, but that's so disrespectful. And so, instead of doing that, I asked people why. Why are you going to vote you, Kit? So I thought I'd start... Oh, yeah, so what I'm going to do with all these statements, with all these conversations, is I'm printing them up on, like, sort of Soviet-style posters and we're going to blitz the whole estate with people's own statements. I'm holding up a mirror. This is what you say. And this is why you're going to vote and hopefully inspire her up the road to vote. So the most... I nearly cried when this bloke called Chris told me he was going to vote UKIP. And he was exa he's exactly the same age as me as Chris. And he said, I've lived through three recessions and this is by far the worst. 
When I left school, same age as me, the only thing on offer was YTS. I've never had a proper job. You know what I mean? Imagine that. I'm 46. 30 years. 30 fucking years. So that's why he's voting UKIP. But anyway, what I've turned it into is a, is a list of statements. Sorry, Chris. No, no, this is Got great. Got mic. So why vote? So it's going to say why, and then the vote's going to punch you right in the face, and then it's going to have the statement. So why vote? I've lived through three recessions. Why vote? It's the way we were brought up. Why vote? Because I've lived in a refugee camp for 15 years, and this is the first time my voice will, be get, will get heard. Why vote? Food banks. Why vote? I want my kids to have a chance. Why vote? Because I'm sick of moaning. Why vote? Because people died for the right to. Why vote? Because it'll be my first time. Why vote? Because people like us matter. Why vote? Because I'm sick of the fucking bankers. Why vote? Because one, it's the one day we have the power. Why vote? Because I'll destroy my ballot paper because they're all rubbish. Why vote? Because we're going to frack under Buckingham Palace. That's <laughs> We've got two minutes. Sorry. No, that's brilliant. And the reason why I wanted to have a conversation with you was A, because then I didn't have to think of anything to say, and B, because of what you just said. I want to ask you one question, because we've got two minutes. Yeah. And this is coming from someone who, you know, last year I did a project where I spoke to white supremacists for quite a long time. Yeah. You know, and it was about how they thought not what they thought yeah. and about the psychological processes that underpin thinking and about how that underpins everyone's political decision no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Is it more important to you to empower Chris and everyone else in Braidmet to be part of the political process or is it more important to engage with the fact that you might, this 100% election spike might cause uh, far more support for UKIP than it does for any other party. I th right. I think it's more important that people vote. And it's it really doesn't matter who they vote for. Because, you know, they've actually got quite a high proportion of people that vote in Breakmet. And it's the sh same in a lot of working class areas. We were brought up that way. We were brought up to vote. We know why, why we have to vote. But the thing is, is what I hope is through that process and through me challenging them, because I do, and through me creating cups of tea moments, which I will be, and through doing a break met question time, where I'm even going to have to speak to Conservatives and my good self, that they're engaging. It's when you're disengaged, disempowered, disenfranchised, you know what I mean? You're fucked. You're properly fucked, and so are they up the road. So, yeah. You know, vote through the foot you like, but vote or destroy your ballot. Thanks very much. Man.